I'm not answering any questions in regards to tattoos. I've talked about that a number of times. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who are on my snap, y'all know that I just posted and I said I'm about to film a flight attendant Q&A. So hit my DM ASAP. And if you are new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button down there. Tell a friend to tell a friend to check my channel out. Give this video a thumbs up. Even if you a hater, give it a thumbs up because we about to jump into this flight attendant Q&A. So what brought me back to my Q&As is I'm starting to get a lot of messages on my Snap, on my Instagram, email. It is literally going down in the DM. So I wanted to take this time and come to you guys because I don't know if y'all seen the numbers on this channel, but hunty, we are almost at 10K. Once we hit 10K, I have a huge announcement for you guys. It could potentially be a meet and greet or it could be, you know, who knows? It could be a meet and greet, it might, it might not. But you gotta tell your friends to get this channel to 10K. But let's jump into this Q&A. So I'm gonna be jumping from I'm going to start with Snap. So some of you have hit me up on Snap. So since I posted there first, I'm going to answer those questions first. And then I'll jump into Instagram. Because some of y'all are so funny. You're like, girl, even though you posted it on Snapchat, I hit you up on Instagram too. Because I wanted to make sure you got it. So shout out to those of you who are following me on all my social media platforms. <clears throat> And also, um, I'm under the weather, and if you're also on my snap, then you guys know I took a breathing treatment like 20 minutes ago. So, yeah. The first question that I got, and this came from Nikos. So, hi Nikos, or Nikos, however it's pronounced. This is a really great question. Nikos asked, has anyone ever judged you about the money that flight attendants make? And I have to say, not like to my face, I'm sure um, I've seen some comments like below videos like, oh, flight attendants don't really make a lot of money. But what a lot of people fail to realize is that flight attendants really can make as much or as little as they want. You know, you have your hourly rate at every single airline. And then when you fly international, every airline has their international pay. If you have leadership quals, you get um, certain pay for that. You're paid for your overnight. So if you fly really, really high time, you can make bank. If you don't, then you know, you don't make bank. So I'm sure there are people out there who judge flight attendants based on how much they make, but little do they know like, the starting salary for some flight attendants is higher than, well, for most flight attendants, it's higher than the minimum wage is for many different states. Actually, I think probably for like all the states. I don't know, don't quote me on that. Y'all can Google it, but yeah. The second question comes from Trey Anthony. What up, Trey Anthony? So Trey Anthony asks, any advice for those who failed out of flight attendant training? Yet again, another great question, and I'm so happy to see questions that I haven't seen before, because some of y'all just be like asking me the same stuff. But my advice for someone who failed out of training is to first sit down and think about why you failed out of training. Were you not paying attention? Were your grades bad? Were you hanging out? What were you doing that you know made you fail training so when you think about that that's what you need to work on and you need to say to yourself like listen i really want to go and earn my wings and since that's something that you really want to do you're gonna have to sit your tail down you're gonna have to stop think and locate some things in life and just buckle down and realize that your training is probably anywhere from like two to eight weeks and you want to just go there and get your wings like if you even get a second opportunity you don't need to let that pass you so that would be my advice and, and my advice would also be to not only reflect on why you failed training but to make sure that you go and apply again if it's something that you really want to do like you got to think about it you put everything on pause in your life to go to training so you need to just make sure that you reapply you know what i'm saying like People fail things all the time. Don't be so hard on yourself and know that you can do it, but you have to buckle down because the only person that's going to earn your wings for you is you. So Trey Anthony also asked if I have any advice for internal candidates. So internal candidates are those candidates that already work for a company 
and they're just looking to transition to another part in the company let's say they're looking to transition to becoming a flight attendant but again they already work for the company my advice is to go in there and bring it like everyone else because you have to understand that just because you work for the company already let's say i don't know you work on the ramp you might be really good on the ramp and in your head you're thinking oh well because i already work for the company and i'm going to be um interviewing for the flight attendant position they're gonna look at me and i'm gonna be over everyone else because i already work here honestly speaking this is just my opinion but i think you have to bring it just like everyone else like you're no better than anyone just because you already work for the company because at the end of the day you're working in that specific department and you're really great there but i just think that it's it's all fair game so my advice that i've given in all of my videos is the same whether you're internal external nocturnal no, let me stop. but like you guys get what i'm saying like that it's the same for everybody if you know better than the next person so it just is what it is so the next question comes from jenna j hi jenna so jenna asked will you tell us some of the craziest people you had on a flight so i can't get too too specific but you know and i've been thinking like do i want to share this in a whole different video of a story time or do i want to say it right now but i would say like my most recent crazy experience is definitely um i had a particular flight i'm not gonna say the route but i had a passenger who was literally in love with me and it got to the point where it was i wasn't scared because see y'all know i'm a g right but like my crew members had to come and like i had to always make sure that i had someone with me because this particular passenger kept um coming towards me and saying like like tika baby i love you uh um <laughs> what did he say he was like um where would i be without you something it was what was he saying to me oh my gosh i don't even remember but it was it went from like funny to crazy slightly scary ish to at the end of the day i think he had good intentions i just think the tequila got to him like you know the tequila make you feel like i think that he thought i was beautiful i think that he was just enjoying his flight he was traveling with friends and I think that he was just turned up and it just became too much. I mean, then at one point he started talking to me about his daughter and his family life. So I know that he had good intentions. But again, like, you know, you're trained to have safety first. So I was just thinking about being safe. So I had to make sure that I always had a crew member with me. But that was, um, it was, it was funny. I mean, it was, it was interesting to say the least. Oh, that's what he said. Oh shoot, that's what he said. He was like, Tika baby, you're the best from the West. I was like, like it was, he kept saying it. He was like, who's the best? Who's the best from the West? Tika baby. Like it was, it was interesting and I have that kind of personality. I could play off of it, but some people may have took it, you know, a different way, but yeah, y'all, that was, that was that. Okay, so the next one comes from Jamair. Jamair says, what's your favorite aircraft to work and your favorite positions? What are the different positions and duties? I can't get into that. Um, hold on, what? Oh God, okay, I, this is this is too much. When it's more than one. <clears throat> oh, okay, so I'm just gonna answer the first part, Jameer. So you said, what's my favorite aircraft to work and my favorite position? So my favorite aircraft right now would have to be the Airbus. Um, I like the, I like any Airbus, any Airbus, as long as I'm working the front. And my favorite position to work is flight leader. I like being a leader. I just, you know, I like to set the tone. And y'all gotta excuse these nails. Like two of them are chipped. I'll paint them tomorrow. I'm just, I've been under the weather, not feeling great. So I'm trying to be here for my YouTube fam. But anyway, so I love the Airbus. It's just really roomy, especially when passengers, passengers excuse me are boarding the aisles are wide enough that i am able to go out and like manifest drink orders for the ground service and i'm like slim enough where i'm telling passengers i'm like don't worry you guys can keep boarding right on by me so it's not one of those things where like my, my first class passengers are held up because 
you know everyone else is in the aisle the aisles are wide enough so I really 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 adore the Airbus and just to your other question is like how do airlines choose jump seats I think um, I, I think it's probably airline specific but from what I've read around the internet for different airlines it just seems like seniority is everything so everything pretty much probably just goes in seniority order so that's why if you're able to choose a training day for your airline make sure that you choose the soonest class that you can because that just means that you're senior to those other people that are going to come in behind you the next one comes from i think this is vakayla all right what is the best and the worst place you traveled and why also tell me about the cheapest place you traveled any famous people you served or seen on a plane so Michaela, i do have a video be sure to check that out that is celebrity encounters that i've had while um like as a flight attendant so check that out that will, that will answer part of your question the other part is the best and the worst place i traveled i would say it really just depends okay so i am going to surround best places that i've traveled i'm going to think about the food because I'm a foodie, you guys know I love food. And I'm gonna, I'm only gonna answer this question in regards to flight attendant layovers. Because if we have to get into the best place I've not read, that's a whole different story. But one of the best places that I've traveled um, as a flight attendant on a layover, I would say, is Daytona Beach. The hotel that we stayed at was like right on the strip with a bunch of other hotels and um, the beach was right there. You it's easily accessible to the beach and y'all I had these bomb nachos. Like these nachos were so good that you just might slap your mama. But don't go slap your mama. Don't go try the nachos and slap her. But they were so bomb. And I had a strawberry margarita and I asked for extra lime and they actually gave it to me. I didn't have to ask again. Like it was just so on point in terms of like just being outside and I saw my palm trees, I had my water, like everything was just there. Now one of the worst layovers I've had was Palm Beach, Florida. And it's probably because that's a difficult flight to work anyway, so while working the flight, I was just like over it. And then on top of that, um, when I got to the layover, I went outside and laid in those little beds that they have around the pool, and those mosquitoes ate me up. Like, I was, I was like, like, smacking everywhere I was so annoyed then when I got in the hotel I didn't have a microwave for my food and the carpet was like really nasty I mean it's carpet right so it's nasty anyway but like I have asthma so I just could not breathe well that night so it just was not a good time so that is the best and the worst place that I've traveled all right, so now I'm gonna head over to Instagram and answer the questions there. So Instagram is actually where I have a ton of questions. I have like 48 questions. I'm not gonna be able to get through all of them because see what happens is some people, I don't know if, how Instagram works. I guess like if you're actually following me, then I get your message. And if you're not, then it goes in a message request. I don't really know. But I'm gonna start with Next question comes from Miss 2050. Hey girl. She says, I've been watching your flight attendant videos on YouTube. I'm currently in the process. Da, 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 da. And you said in your first six months, do not overfly. Do you mean don't overwork fly or overfly in general? What I mean is if I take it, take it easy-ish flying for work, is it also too much to try to start taking vacations right away on my days off? Girl, that is so cute that you think you're going to graduate and be able to take it easy-ish for work. Girl, it's not going to happen. Now, I don't know. Okay, so my lighting is kind of going down here a little bit. Hold on. So, y'all work with me. Okay, I don't know what airline you might be hired with, but I'm going to tell you like I've told y'all in other videos. When you get on the line you have to put in work and like i said in another video you gotta put in work 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 um it sounds really good to say i'm not gonna you know fly too much but i'm gonna take a ton of vacations it's probably not going to happen i'm not trying to burst your bubble because maybe just maybe it will happen for you but don't go in with that expectation so what I meant by don't overfly was like, 
let's say you're scheduled 80 hours a month but the airline that you are working for allows you to work an unlimited number of hours if you fly 150 hours you're gonna burn yourself out and you have a probationary period so you just want to make sure that you take good care of yourself and just kind of get in the loop of this flight attendant life and seeing what it's really like before you just start picking up these trips out of nowhere because y'all it can be a lot and you can get beat down and if you are you know sickly like I am like I have asthma I was born with asthma I told you guys before like it can really take a toll on your body so you have to take good good care of yourself so that is what i meant by don't overfly just pace yourself if you have like five days off maybe you'll say you know to a friend hey let's like go to cancun for two days as opposed to let me pick up you know this four day trip to paris like that's working it's, it's you're on a different time zone you will tire out i promise you you will the next question comes from Bread. So Bread wants to know, I'm growing my natural loose hair out and I'm rocking Marley twists. I'm not sure if I should get a sew in with straight hair or keep the twist or just let my hair out. So this is a this is a tough one, right? I feel like it's only a tough question based on how I feel. Um I want to tell you to wear your hair however you feel but i also have to tell you to wear your hair in a professional style as you guys see i rock my sew in i have my closure i got my my bundles look how long this hair is but i'm gonna tell y'all right now you've seen me in uniform i have a picture on my instagram i put pictures on my snap all the time you will never see this hair on a flight down it's always back in a professional style and i will get around to filming that video i know you guys want to know how i style my hair you guys want to know how i get ready for work i will do one of those but what you won't do is see me actually in my uniform when i get ready for work i will show you how i do my hair i will show you how i do my makeup but i won't show you myself in uniform with that um but you have to just remember this is corporate america so you see where i'm going with this like um just I, I would i would rock the 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 you got the marley twist you can easily style those in a professional style the braids you can style that when it comes to you know our natural hair it's tough i would say when you're going to your interview to just make sure that your hair is in a professional style look around on the internet use hashtags look for pictures and just look for you know professional styles with um because like if you do the twist out with your natural hair you can easily twist that into like a cute bun or something just make sure that at the end of the day you keep in mind once again it's corporate america and you want to be professional the next question comes from shanika and shanika wants to know how long does it take for them to get back to you when you're interviewing girl i have beat many dead horses with this but i'm going to tell you right now patience is key and it could take you anywhere from probably a day to a year it you know at the end of the day all these airlines are getting multiple candidates you know we are in the um babe what do they call it it's so millennial and what's the other one generation y generation y so <clears throat> So we, we are in the, um, um, I think it's like, so it's Generation Y and then Millennials. So when it comes to Generation Y and, and Millennials, like I am a Millennial, we want things like this. We want it right now, right now, right now. We have no patience. We just want it when we want it. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If there's, if there's something that you can pull from the folks like, that paved the way for us it was that patience is key and y'all gotta be super duper patient because i'm telling you like a lot of people apply for these positions and as long as you're like current at whatever airline you applied with like honey you're on the money like if they don't want you they gonna tell you they're not gonna beat around the bush so the next one comes from a person that i am going to keep a secret so this person basically is going to start training in January and they want to know um, how I handle 
being away from my fiance and um like if i if, if like when we plan our marriage like when we actually get married how will that work with my job and all that sort of stuff so the first thing i will say is i've talked about this briefly before but i have a very healthy relationship with my fiance my fiance is very very supportive and my fiance is like go make your money babe you know what i mean so it's like that that alone you know we have trust we um we facetime when i'm away like we fall asleep on the phone like wake each other up like we're very very connected even when i'm not there um even when i am on a different time zone i am like like we still talk it doesn't it doesn't nothing changes you know what i mean i'm just not physically there and I told you guys when I go away I like cook and make food and speaking of cook and make food I haven't cooked in like a week so I gotta get back on that and I will be filming some cooking videos but you know when it comes to your relationships and being a flight attendant you just need to make sure that your partner understands um, what this job entails and that's really hard because you don't know what it entails until you step into it so for this specific person who asked, I think it's, if you're really worried about this, your relationship, I would, this is going to sound so bad, but I would reconsider the airline that you're going to be training with. The reason why I say that is because that airline is not even here, like in the States. So that kind of worries me a little bit but if you guys can make it then so be it i just think that you should um probably go for a u.s carrier as opposed to going as far as you are going because that's that's a little difficult but um and in terms of like when my fiance and i plan our marriage and yes y'all when i do plan my wedding i will definitely be dropping all types of links and i do expect expect wedding gifts yes i do so just start saving now because i have good taste but you know it's not gonna be super expensive so i do expect wedding gifts but anyway it's not about me so anyway check it out right you will know like hey i'm getting married on i don't know december 20th but let me back up because if you're just starting flying don't choose a wedding date around the holidays because like you're your junior and it's gonna be really hard to get that off so you'll choose your day and you'll just try to work out your schedule you'll bid for that time off and if you don't get that time off you will swap and drop and work it out with different people so that you actually get that time off you will make sure that you don't miss your wedding because i mean if you miss your wedding then who's gonna say i do right um but yeah so i think that's all for this flight attendant Q&A I am like getting out of breath um I need to go rest and I'm gonna put this video up um and if you guys do have other questions I am going to ask you to drop those down below I will film another flight attendant Q&A video at some point in life and um, it'll be sooner than you think and then I will get around to those questions if I have not answered your question and you just send it to me it's because I've answered that question before and you can find that information in other videos so thank you for those of you who sent these new refreshing questions it's always nice because what you're asking is probably what someone is thinking but too scared to ask so in the meantime, in between time, make sure you guys continue to stay beautiful from the inside to the out. Let your light shine. Don't let no one or nothing stop you from glowing, growing, and earning your wings. Shout out to those of you who have hit me up in the last couple of days. Like, girl, I got my CJO on the spot. I am so 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 proud of you and for those of you who are still waiting and you know hopeful for an email saying that you got your cjo let go and let god if it's for you it's not gonna pass you so i will talk to you guys in my next video bye